Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about topology study in SOLIDWORKS. So basically, the essence of the topology is this. If I have a part that I designed, and I have some design constraints and some goals, what is the minimal amount of material that I need to achieve my goal and where should this material be placed? So let's say I have this I-beam and it's a console beam so it's fixed on one side and there is load on the top and now you have some goals like what is your goal? For example, I want to get the best sniff, stiffness to math ratio, right? I want to optimize my design. I want to, let's say, reduce the mass from what it is by 30%, and I have limitation on the safety factor. Nowhere along the beam, I want the safety factor to be below 1.25. I also want to keep a symmetry plane, let's say, through the uh, middle of the web, right, vertical plane. Of course, I have some other uh, uh, limitations, like I want the thickness in some places to be not less than some things, right? So any manufacturing uh, controls or basically constraints, the design goals and constraints, once you have all of that, how would you determine where the material should be and how much of material should be used? So that's the uh, essence of topology. And here, to show you how you do it in SOLIDWORKS, because this is really important for designs, is this is my beam. And uh, I go to new studies and then I go here to design insight topology. Last time I did in one of my videos for you design study, right? Which you control uh, some parameters here. You have, let's say, you have, let's say, the height of the beam, the width of the beam, the depth of the beam, some thicknesses. They are your design parameters. And you have some goals and some constraints in terms of equations. And then basically SOLIDWORKS does an optimization for you and finds which set of uh, those parameters you should choose to get the optimum design. Topology is a little bit different. Uh, you're not going to tell SOLIDWORKS where to change the geometry. It decides by itself, okay? And it relocates the material. So the shape is not necessarily going to be perfectly uniform. It is going to suggest to you where is it a good place to remove material, where is it to reinforce. So you go to the, as I said, topology, and here I have already done it. The reason I have done it is when you start the uh, simulation and the optimization, it takes quite a time for it to do the job. So uh, I did it ahead of time so I can show you the results. But uh, once you come here, this folder, uh, fixture, external loads, uh, manufacturing controls, all of them are empty. So you have to keep adding, right? So adding fixture and external load is just like a stress simulation. You go add a fixed geometry, which I added here. Then you right click to external loads and I added the force on the top, right? Which are these uh, pink um, arrows. And if you look at the amount of load is 5,000 Newton. I made the, this side, as I said, a, a fixed geometry right and then here you go to goals and constraints right if you right click here typically one of the first thing it suggests to you is the best stiffness to weight ratio or you want the minimum um, uh, minimize the maximum displacement or minimize the mass or anything you can choose those right these are your typical goals of a design right but uh, let's say here I went to um, best uh, stiffness to mass ratio, correct? So I added that already, right? When you go, it is like this. And you can change it to other ones. You can talk about displacement constraints. So if you want, if you have some safety factor and you want the resultant displacement or in any specific position, in any specific location, you can do that. You can talk about frequency constraints, right? If it is under specific vibrations and you don't want the resonance to happen, then you can limit the natural frequencies of the beam to be within a specific range. 
or uh, you can talk about safety factor, which is what you see I added. I say I want the safety factor to be always greater than 1.25, right? So you add your overall goals and constraint, which you see I have added these two. Then when you right click on manufacturing, you can create preserved regions. It means do not touch those regions. Do not think about removing material from those regions or adding to the thickness of those regions. Forget it. Specify thickness control is the same, right? If I want the minimum thickness in my whole object to be less than something, right? Or um, the maximum, I can do that. I can also uh, talk about molding, if it's about the molding process, or I can specify specific planes as symmetric planes. So at the end of the day, this uh, part that you suggest me make should have a plane of symmetry here. I said, yes, I always want the right plane to be plane of symmetry. And I can add, let's say here, the top plane also to be a plane of symmetry, right? So you can control the symmetry. For manufacturing, then you right click and say mesh and run, or you mesh it first as you want and then run this analysis. And once you do that here, let me show you the results. So it gives you this plot. Okay, and if you look at this plot, uh, it shows you the areas that you must keep in yellow and the areas you are okay to remove in dark blue. Okay, so definitely it says, hey, these areas, right, these areas are okay if you want to remove some uh, mass from it. Let me show you from this view, maybe. So if you look, you see the thickness of the flange is the same, but now, it says once you go toward the end of the beam, because the stress is much lower here compared to the fixed end of the beam. If you look at the stress concentration on this beam, and I'm going to show you in a minute, the stress is much, much higher here compared to what? Compared to the right side. So right side is the area that you probably want to remove material. The other thing is the uh, bending stress is much higher uh, at the top and bottom of the beam, right? So we know that from bending from solid mechanics. And as you get away from the neutral axis, the bending stress is going to go up. So um, if you look here on the left side, which you have to keep the material, if you have to remove material anywhere, it has to be toward the neutral axis, where uh, the um, stress is lower. Okay? But of course, you have to be careful, right? A, not always you might want to make a beam like this. Because this brings with itself uh, manufacturing problems and it also brings for you stress concentration problems. So uh, the goal is not really to change your I-beam to some crazy things like this. But in many designs, the final shape that it gives you is kind of, uh, if you even go with that final shape, it is still okay. Not in this case, of course, you don't want to just keep the yellow areas and eliminate the dark blue areas. But it at least gives you an idea. Hey, if you want to design this beam, maybe uh, you can reduce the thickness toward the end of the beam. So you might maybe give it a draft angle toward the end, correct? Right? And maybe you can use a little bit smaller thickness on the web compared to the flanges. Right? So there are so many things that you have to pay attention. If you still want to produce an I-beam, you don't want to completely ruin the shape by exactly removing the material, but you might redesign your beam using the information that you got here, right? using some draft angle, reducing thickness in some areas, and then you can uh, get the goals that are suggested here. right? So um, you clearly see you can get the, the topology stress plot, a factor of safety plot, and so many other things. So let me see if I can get a stress plot for you here, right? And I go with one mices, and I say, show me the true scale, and I OK that. And now this is what you can see here, as I told you. 
the stress is high toward this side of the beam, right? These are the red and yellow green areas. As you go toward the middle of the beam and toward the right side, you have much, much lower stress. And these are the areas that you see in this plot it is suggesting you to remove. Okay, so we try to keep the video short as I promised and we are going to stop the video at this point. So hopefully it was useful to you and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.